even though I think it was very difficult back then to launch businesses, um, you know, even in like the mid nineties, I wanted to launch my own business and I just didn't have the means. I didn't have the financial means to do it back then. I, I would have, I would tell myself just to go ahead and get started where, whatever that looked like, just to go ahead and get started and start building it. Welcome to clicks and bricks podcast. We talk about the entrepreneur mindset. If you get one shot at this, what kind of shot are you going to take? If we forget who we are, they're going to forget who you are. You've got an adversity story that's out of this world. Everything from that Main Street brick and mortar to that billion dollar manufacturer. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're talking with Destiny Cop. She is a serial entrepreneur. She's got multiple different brands. Super excited to bring her onto the show today. How are you doing today, Destiny? I'm doing great, Ken. Thank you so much for having me. I am super excited to be here with you today. Thank you for joining us. I'm excited to dive into your businesses and what it is that you currently are doing. But before we dive into there, can you give the audience a little bit history on who you are and what makes you the woman that you are today? Okay, so I can go back as far or <laughs> as early as you want me to, but just Bring to get us back to the beginning. So there you go. So um, in, in college, I graduated with an accounting degree. And let me just tell you, I absolutely hated that. So I got out of that really quickly and moved into marketing. So I worked in corporate marketing for many years, um, kind of a big fortune 50 company, you know, director of marketing, that sort of thing. And I got burned out, like probably a lot of people that are listening to this can probably relate to that. And that's when I decided I wanted to do something else. So at that point in time, I just kind of took a step back, took a year off from work. And I decided to go into teaching because I have always loved helping others. So I started teaching at the university level, teaching marketing classes there. And I did that, Ken, for many, many years. Started as an adjunct faculty member, worked all, all my, you know, worked my way up to an associate vice chancellor of academic affairs. So I did that for many, many years. And then I got burned out again. And it had always been my dream to be an entrepreneur. And I was like, you know what? It's now or never. I really want to kind of dig into this, do something different. And about five or so years ago, that's what I did. I left my you know, university job. I started working as an entrepreneur, started with one business. And you know, several years later, I have a couple others under my belt in the process of launching another one. So it has been, um, it's been an awesome journey for me. Wonderful. So let's talk about quitting your job and taking a year off work for just a second. We don't want to dive into there too much. And, and that's not the moment you decided that, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to be in charge of my own destiny and, and start a business, but it is, kind of a catalyst moment for you to say, hey, corporate America is not my jam. How, what was that like? And, and how did you find the finances, financial support to make it through that year? So when I left that particular job, I got a package and I actually okay. asked them for a package. This is when the firm that I was working with was merging with AT&T. And I know a lot of people have probably heard about AT&T. So I asked them for a package and they gave me one. Now, it wasn't a huge package, but, you know, I kind of, you know, made it made it through, um, right. took a year off from work, um, got in the best shape of my life. So it worked out a lot. And at that point in time, I had two very, very small children. Now, I did at that point, in one, you know, at that point, I did want to start my own business. But this was back in the early 2000s. And let me tell you, it was not as easy to do that as it is today or as it right. was, you know, a few years ago when I got started too. just all the tools and the technology just, it wasn't, a, you know, you just, it was very difficult to get started then. Um, so I, I wasn't able to kind of, you know, delve into being an entrepreneur at that point in time, but I did do something that I love doing, which was helping others in teaching. It derailed me for, you know, several years, like I mentioned, but I finally, you know, got to take that extra plunge at some point in the future. Congratulations for taking that year off and and kind of navigating through your life and finding teaching. So let's skip forward through a little bit. So you're adjunct teacher, you're in the university. You quit your job 
and then start the business or do you start the side hustle and start replacing your income? So I personally quit my job at the start of the business. Now I had, you know, kind of a little bit started while I was working, but not a lot. Um, you know, financially, I, you know, I was financially secure, so I was able to do that. I know that's not an option for some people out there. And generally, I would recommend that you actually have, you know, a good established business and that revenue in place, unless you were in a, you know, unless you were financially stable like I was. Right. Um, and and I, just, I know that a lot of people don't have that. What does that mean, financially stable? Um, well, in terms of I wasn't depending on my income from this business to pay my mortgage, feed my family, my because right. I have two, two, still two very small kids at home. You know, I wasn't dependent upon that to, you know, on that income, if you would, right. you know, to support look, them. Does that look like um, I've, I've done a really good job? I, my past self did a really good job for myself today. And I saved money, or is that income from a significant other? I would say it's a combination of both. Um, you know, I've worked all my life, so I had a good amount of savings in place. Right. Um, so that helped us be able to do that. And then I also have a spouse too that contributes to the household. Um, and some people may have that, they may not have that, but I have I have both of those. Right. If you have the spouse at home and you're in a position like what you were in, you're quitting your job and you're gonna do, you're gonna start a business, your income's no longer coming into the household. That's a decision, that's a family decision, right? How important was it to have your significant other, your spouse, 100% on board as a cheerleader instead of somebody that's kind of naysaying your concept? So that's a really good question. <laughs> and I hope he's not listening to this. So I would say that, um, I would say it's very important to have the support of your spouse to be able to make that transition. Now, I wouldn't go out, I wouldn't say that it's been all rosy for us, you know, yeah. because nothing's ever per perfect, but we definitely agreed together that I would make this transition into entrepreneurship. Um, now, would he have liked it to have been making the money, you know, that I'm making to, you know, today faster? Yes. Right. But I don't think either of us realized that it was going to be as hard as it was. And keep in mind, Ken, I have over 25 years of marketing experience. I've worked, I've managed budgets that were, you know, almost, you know, my, the income that I was managing when I was working for that firm that merged with AT&T was close to a billion dollars. So I know how to manage money. I know how to market products and businesses. And it, even for somebody like me, it took me a while to get up and running. It, it's a tough business. I, I build funnels for people. I don't market that service at all. The only time I'm going to build a funnel for somebody is that they come to me and specifically ask because that market is so saturated unless you really get into a specific niche and you become the gym launch guy, right? Then it's mm -hmm. really, really challenging to be a digital marketer day because the barrier to entry is pretty low, right? You don't, you have to be able to manage Facebook a little bit and say that you can build an ad. That's what you have to be able to do to, to even get into the business. Doesn't mean you're good at it, but you know, in a world where price sometimes wins, it's hard to get a competitive price for a product and service that is of a Fortune 50 level, right? Which, and I, and I know a mom and pop funnel and I know a Fortune 50 funnel and they're wildly different, right? Um, just out of curiosity, on the average Fortune 50 funnel that you built or like that kind of thing, how many follow-up sequences are there? So the, the funnels that we had with the Fortune 50 company, it was, it, you know, it was a little bit different than just you, what you would consider, you know, an right. online funnel today, because we had salespeople involved because the products that we were selling, the products and services that we were selling were extremely high ticket, you know, mil right. some of them were a million dollars a month. 
Um, so it, it was just a very, very different model um, than what you would see for like a, a coach out there or somebody who's selling an online course or a membership, right. which is, you know, what we, what I help people with in my personal brand. So it's, it was, it's just a very, very different marketing system. Right. So what you're explaining on that fortune 50 guy, fortune 500, even or software as a service for most of the point, your funnel looks like I need to get some attention, capture some data so that I can demo my product, right? And that's a stop in that funnel, right? Which is probably three or four steps, maybe maybe even eight steps into the communication with that customer before you get that first demo, right? I I see all the time, I hate it. Um, these these kids out there promoting, I'll build your funnel for you and I add and for $300 or $800 and I ask them like, can you tell me what a funnel is? Because if you can do it for $800, I'm, I'm curious to see what you think a sales funnel is, right? And I've, deleted the, the phrase funnel from my vocabulary. I call it the online sales process um, because I think funnel is a little too catchy and people think it's a magic phrase for making millions of dollars overnight. And I don't, I don't understand why that's the case. You started a business with 20 years of experience helping, who, who did you go out to the market to help at that point? Yeah, so I when I first started into entrepreneurship, I wanted to take my kind of expertise in marketing, but also my expertise in creating online courses, because that's what I did at the university level. So I was creating online courses and teaching online back in 2005, before anybody really had heard about them. You know, people would come to me, and they're like, you're teaching online, can people actually learn that way? I'm like, absolutely, yes, this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. So I wanted to kind of take that expertise and kind of bundle it with my marketing. And that's what we do in my personal brand. My destinycop.com brand is where we help entrepreneurs and experts in their fields, coaches, and that's consultants and that sort of thing, um, you know, help them create online courses or memberships and sell them in, you know, in the funnels. I know you don't like right. to use that term, but basically in evergreen type funnels or even launches. And that's what we do. And that's kind of what I started doing, which is branched into kind of other things, but that's what, that's the core kind of business that I started. Right. And you did that in 2005. Well, I, no, I did. I, no, I did okay. not start that until I quit the, the university. So it was okay. from, around five or so years ago is when I started getting into that. What a great time to get into the personal education industry. Right. I mean, you've, so I'm assuming COVID was very good for you in, in yeah. that whole world. Um, yes. And I'm trying to think back. So Udemy is a very, very popular self-education platform. And I know that they made some significant changes about five or six years ago on their pricing models. Right? They used to charge a whole lot for their pricing for their classes and they dropped it. They run these really super aggressive deals today. Um, so yeah, I, Congratulations for getting into that space at that time, because that I think it was probably one of the better times to get into that space. But you're not doing the online education. You're teaching people to create courses and go out and sell those in the marketplace. What kind of courses, what are some of like, maybe some of your favorite courses that you've helped people build and launch? So that's a, that's a very good question. So it really just runs the gamut. I mean, there's people out there that have, you know, gone through our programs where they've taught other people how to knit, um, taught people how to like play the guitar. One was a welding course. Now I don't know a lot about it, so I can't go into details right. about that, but you know, it has to do with welding and you know, how you do that. And I know it was, they, he did some stuff with cars too. So it just really runs a gamut. Um, of course, educational stuff. We had one person who has like a Pilates membership. So a lot of health and wellness type programs out there. Right. Um, some of these are like coaches where they have built um, like an online course or membership and bundle that in with their coaching program. So that tends to work, you know, very well with them. So some of the life coaches out there that might be helping people with, you know, creating that, you know, their ideal life or getting right. rid of anxiety or, you know, those sort of things. So it just really runs the gamut, Ken. That is so much fun. Um, 
I have a couple of mentees that I work with, ment- I guess I'm their mentors, that are in these, that are doing this right now, um, creating, creating either a course or some kind of um, self-help products or services. And I find it fascinating and it, it's so much fun right now. I think we're in a really unique spot in time post-COVID with people hungry for knowledge and understanding that traditional methods aren't really doing what they want, aren't giving them what they want. So super fun to do that. However, in this particular case scenario and in entrepreneurship, if somebody's trying to be, open their first business, I find a couple things to, to ring true pretty loudly. And I'm interested in how you help your students are there students that you're helping do this? What do you call the call your clients in that particular realm? It kind of just depends. Most of them go through our online course. Now we do have a like a one-on-one coaching program. Right. So more client type work there because it's, you know, very kind of personalized and, you know, one-on-one. But a lot right. of them, a lot of them go through our online courses that we have. So I, I don't like using the phrase too much, the imposter syndrome that I find a lot of people down that are headed down this path run into imposter syndrome. If it's building a course or just opening a business, they're like, should I even be, do, who am I to do this kind of work? And the mm-hmm. other thing that I find interesting that, that people need coaching through is the self-sabotage that they do to themselves while they're on this path. And I find it fascinating. In your program, do you have, do you help them through those hurdles as well? Definitely in our one-on-one coaching clients that we're working with and and what you're describing there is very normal and common. And I think even I can relate to a lot of that. So we, we can all raise our hands and say, you know, that's us. And, you know, so yes, to answer your question, you have, that has to be part of the equation. Yes. You have to work. You can do a lot without doing a lot of self-work, but if you really want to bring anything to the next level, you've got to really look internally and do a whole lot of work on yourself. And it's, it's humbling when you're down that path, when you're going down that, yeah. um, but it's required. And I don't know that you can truly be successful without going through that process. I will say that a, that a tip that's worked for me, and I'm not saying that this is the right way or the only way, is I stay off social media for personal reasons. Um, we use it for business. We post from a business perspective, but I do not go on social media. And I can't even tell you how much that has helped me with all of the, you know, what you just talked about, that imposter syndrome or, you know, can I do this? Should I be doing this? That has been one of the best things for me is to not expose myself to social media or negative comments or, you know, anything that goes along with that. I am, I'm big on social media. I'm there nonstop. I have found the block button to be wildly helpful <laughs> um, or hide, not even block, let's just hide, right? I've got some friends, I love them to death, but you know, every single meme has to have a political agenda and you know, I'm just like, man, sometimes a cigar is a cigar, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, let's just, yeah. let's just be a joke, be a joke and let's move on with life. It, it's okay. Um, so I definitely understand what you, what you mean by staying off the social media. I use that hide button, stay away from the, the negative comments. And you know who these people are in your life. You love them, but you don't need all of their input because it's just not no. that healthy. So I, I love that tip. For me, I, I've done a whole bunch of stuff, right? I mean, everything from psychotherapy, hypnosis. Um, I do a lot of breathing work. A lot of breath work yeah. and meditation helps me tremendously. Um, on all of these journeys. And I've got um, a whole bunch of stuff that I do on a regular basis to help me through there. And I'm actually working on some self-help content as well on, on that path. So wonderful. So you've got that company, right? But that wasn't yeah. enough for you. So you started another one. I did. So what, what compelled the- you to say, Hey, I love, I love what I'm doing. I'm helping people grow. I'm helping people teach, help people make a living just not enough for destiny. Yeah. So 
why, why did I start this? I, I, the couple of reasons I think why I started it now that I, now that you're asking me that question, <laughs> I've never really sat down and really thought about it. But um, what we had or what we found is that a lot of people that were going through our programs, our courses, they were having troubles building their audience, right? There's this, it's a saturated market out there, you know, it go kind of goes back into what we talked about earlier. You know, years ago, it was hard to get started because we didn't have the tools. Now there's no barriers to entry and there's tons of people out there and it's a very saturated market and right. people- How do I stand out? Yeah, it's hard to stand out. It's hard for them to build their audience. So, and these were people that weren't, necessarily business people or marketers, but they have a lot to share with the world. Right. So we have this brand, it's called Hobby School, Hobby School without an H in it. So kind of a cool, a cool name there. And our goal with this brand originally, which is still part of it, but it was to help people, you know, build their audience, get their name out, let people know who they are and what they're selling in terms of digital products. So we originally started kind of the business model with this brand where we were doing what we call these niche bundles. So paid bundles. So the idea was that we would have contributors would donate a digital product to the bundle and then everybody would promote it. So it'd be a way for them to sell their digital products, right? And it, it did fine. So we did a couple of those launches and it did fine, but it wasn't giving them enough exposure, in my opinion. We just weren't getting it out to enough people. So then I, I've ran virtual summits. Um, I've already, I've done so many of them in my personal brand. And I, I have a model that works, a formula that works. I said, you know what? we're going to do this in hobby school. And we did it and it was a huge success. We did a home garden and cooking summit. So we brought contributors together or speakers together. They spoke on their particular um, you know, topic that they were doing related to home gardens. Um, we had tons of exposure for their business. Um, we had an all access pass. They had do donated some of their digital products. And it was really a great way for them to get their message out into the world. So we're, we're continuing to do those. We're doing a virtual summit every single month wow. in that particular brand. We're doing a crafting summit coming up, a creativity one where we have people who are going to be teaching like painting and drawing and that sort of thing. So it's, it's definitely a fun brand and it's a really good way for people who have courses in or memberships in those niches to get exposure for themselves. Wonderful. So hobby school is an extension of your coursework creation. And what's the name of the coursework creation company? It's One just my personal brand, destinycop.com. Very okay. no, not unique or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so you go there and learn about, hey, we help you build courses. And hobby school is a place you can go to learn more about hobbies, but also a collaboration of people that might have gone through Destiny Cop and they can sell their coursework there. And that's they can, a but we take we take speakers from everywhere. So every, right. every summit that we do, we'll go out and find speakers that would be good for that particular summit. And if they want to participate, they're welcome to participate. Wonderful. And you're getting ready to launch a third. I am. So it, it, you know, I don't, I don't know um, exactly when you're going to be launching this, but uh, um, late it's September, not it, late September, 2022. Okay. So by the time we launch this, it will most likely be out or around that time. It's um, a SaaS product an app. And basically what we're doing is, is template content. So if you're like an online you know, you're a coach, online course creator, membership owner. A lot of those are solopreneurs or they have very, very small teams and they don't have the time to create marketing content. So we have template marketing content that is relevant for them in their specific business. Okay. And we're, uh, we're integrating what we, it's an AI writer, an artificial intelligent writer. So if they need help customizing it, we're going to have that integrated in the app. 
So let's, I'll give you an example. Like one, uh, some of the content we have in here is for Black Friday. And a lot of them are gonna want to run some Black Friday promotions. So we have, you know, a bunch of different emails that they can pick from and they can just take these emails, modify them and use them in their marketing. So that's the app, that's what we're launching. Um, it's called hellocontent.io. So there oh, you wonderful. go, you're the first to know. <laughs> I love it. Hellocontent.io, we'll put that link down here as well. Yep. Launching in September, 2022, hopefully we're, we're headed that way right now at least. And we're headed we'll that the, way. <laughs> when this episode goes out, we will definitely put all the details at the bottom of it. We'll keep in touch with Destiny so that we know what's going on. This is a popular question that's been going on on TikTok right now. Uh -oh. And I normally don't like asking if, if you could talk to your 22-year-old self, 20-year-old self. I don't like that question because it's not relevant to today, right? But the way that they frame this new question is if you could go back and tell yourself three things, what would those three things be? Oh man, this is a really good question. I hadn't heard this one from TikTok because I don't, I don't go on TikTok that okay. much. Um, so if I had to tell, I would, even though I think it was very difficult back then to launch businesses, um, you know, even in like the mid nineties, I wanted to launch my own business and I just didn't have the means. I didn't have the financial means to do it back then. I, I would have, I would tell myself just to go ahead and get started where, whatever that looked like, just to go ahead and get started and start building right. it. I feel like I wasted way too much time. So if I could have gotten started, you know, 20 years earlier, I think that would have been, you know, the ideal right. situation. Um, and really, you know, I ha and I have something on my wall here and I'll just go ahead and read it to you. And I, I think I would tell my 22 year old self this also, it says, don't worry about failures, worry about the chances you'll miss if you don't even try. So, you know, I, I think that yeah is a really something good to kind of remember. Don't, don't worry about failing. You're just, you know, fail, failure is just part of the process and you'll right. learn so much from it. Um, and, and I guess maybe the last thing would be is don't worry so much about the finances because I think that's something I've always worried about my whole life. And I didn't really take the plunge into entrepreneurship until I was extreme. I was really, quite frankly, extremely financially stable at that point in time right. that I wish I had taken those financial risks earlier. Okay. I, I love all of them. So one is get started, right? Yes. Um, that That is as simple as going to the bank and getting a DBA or filing for your LLC. You know, those things are $100 for roughly 100 bucks for an LLC, depending on your state. I think it's $10 for a DBA. Now we have LegalZoom, which makes that so much easier to do than talking to an attorney or dealing with your, your state representatives. Um, Two would be don't be afraid of failure. I love that, right? Yeah. I love, um, you know, I think we just have a bad relationship with failure in our world, right? We look at failure, we look at failure as this definitive thing instead of it's just a path, you know, it's a step on the, in the road. It's not, the only time failure is bad is when you fail and you quit, you give up, you don't keep going, right? That's, yeah. that's when a failure is bad. Um, and the third one is, you know, an abundance mindset over a, uh, What's the other one? I, I only know the abundance word anymore. Scarcity. Yeah, I mean, I was just so worried about, mindset. yeah, the finances. I was worried about the finances and, you know, I wish I hadn't worried so much about them because it right. would have been okay. Honestly, it would have been okay. But I think that, you know, product. I'm a product of the 80s. I'm assuming you are a product of the 80s and 90s as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things were more scarce back then. We didn't have, you know, yeah. today, I mean, our grocery stores weren't open on Sunday. Saturdays and Sundays, oh. right? They weren't, or Saturdays was a short day, I think. So, you know, we grew up in a time that things were more scarce than they are now. So I, I understand that mindset, but having that mindset is um, detrimental to your business. It'll destroy your business. If you have a scarcity mindset that the world isn't big enough for your products and services, um, then you're going to fail, I think. I don't know any other way around it. So. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I agree with you. It just, it's a different, 
um, growing up, I think when we did the seventies, eighties and nineties, I was in the college, I was in college in the nineties and it's just, it's just a different world back then. You know, the internet was just getting started. I, I didn't do any of my schoolwork on the internet, you know, so it was a very new thing and you just you really didn't know what it was going to be like. Right. And it, a lot of people said it was a fad. Oh, that internet thing's a fad. It's not going to mm -hmm. last. Right. So, and now, I mean, post COVID, I think everybody on the planet has been on a zoom call just about. So. <laughs> And they're learning online. So they, that, they learned how to do that too. <laughs> Absolutely. So Destiny, I've, I've had so much fun talking to you, learning about your businesses. If there's somebody out there that's in business today and they're struggling to overcome a hurdle or they're sitting at home with some knowledge in their head, like, man, I could, I could give this to the world and maybe you know, squeeze a couple bucks out of it or make a living out of it. What words of advice do you give them to help them get up and get to work? So I, I would say that if you have an online course idea in your mind, um, I, I would go out and just do a little bit of research and see if other people are teaching it. Where I tell people to go is what you mentioned earlier, Ken. I yeah. tell them to go to Udemy. Because if you go to Udemy and you just do a search on it, if there's people out there teaching on it, that means that there's a demand in the marketplace and there's room for you. There's room for you to um, take that idea that you have and create it, you know, put it in a product and sell it and help others and have, have an impact in the world. Um, so, you know, just go, if they want to go to my website, Ken, I, we have a ton of resources for people who are just wanting to take that next step and learn a little bit more about online course creation and what it is. And it's my main website, destinycop.com. That, that, that's destiny spelled with an I, not a Y at the end, <laughs> destinycop.com. And we have a ton of resources there for you. And we'll throw it at the bottom. So I want to go, I'm going to circle back to that for just a second. So you're saying, go to Udemy, search for it. If it's there, there's a demand, but isn't the person that's there already have brand authority over me? Why would I jump into something that somebody else is already doing? So I, I would say that I wouldn't worry about that at all because you as the individual, you are going to bring your own unique experiences, your own unique knowledge that nobody else in this world has. You're going to bring that to the table when you go to help your audience with your online course or membership or whatever you're creating. So, you know, d don't worry about that imposter syndrome or anything else that we talked about today um, because you, you will be unique. Every, we are all right. unique, right? We all bring something well, different to the table. And if you lean into your uniqueness, then you don't even have to think about imposter syndrome because you're just being uniquely yourself. There you go. I and, like and, that. <laughs> and there is no imposter there because it's just who you are, right? Yeah. And I think for specifically on the online training world, you know, people are like, well, I'm not an expert at this or, you know, I'm not the, the world's best at what I'm doing. All you're doing is teaching somebody where you were a year ago, right? And there's, there's a ton of people there, right? You don't have to be the best piano teacher, the best piano player in the world to be able to teach chopsticks, right? You can, if you know chopsticks, you can teach it. And there's plenty of people out there would pay it, all kinds of different dollar amounts that, that have you teach them how to play chopsticks on the piano, right? Even if that's the only course that you ever did. So I, I think the industry is fascinating and I'm excited to see what happens over the next 10 years in the self-education industry, because I think it's gonna be a, a huge, huge marketplace um, over the next 10, 20 years. And I'm super excited to see what virtual reality brings to that table. So Destiny, thank you so much for your time today. I very much appreciate it. One last time, Destiny Cop, dot com that's d-e-s-t-i-n-i-c-o-p-p.com correct you got it and we'll throw that right across the bottom of the screen we'll put all your urls to the different stuff and as soon as we get um the new software as a service company links up put them out as well congratulations and good luck on that launch oh thank you so much ken and thanks for having me today thank you you have a great day thanks thanks for watching today's episode of clicks and bricks get to work